All right. So we check to see which version of Pi EMV we are set up with globally. Um, and that is what we're going to be using here when we uh, set up our virtual environment. But before we do that, we have to clone the repo. So I'm going to go into my code SEI code alongs directory. And I am going to git clone Python libraries. Oh, SSH on this machine. I got used to using my Mac, sorry. Oh, it is going to be a day today, y'all. So we have set that up. We have cloned that. We've CD'd into it. Let's uh, before we open that up in VS Code, let's go ahead and set up our virtual environment. So I already have one called Python libraries. So I'm going to type pi env virtual env 3.8.6 because that is what I have set globally. We'll call it Python libs just because I don't have that already. And then I'm going to activate that virtual environment by typing pi env local, which I'm going to initialize the current directory that I'm in as a virtual environment, Python libs. And you'll see that my cursor or my uh, terminal changes to indicate that I'm in a virtual environment. So we can open that up in VS Code. Again, if you're um, Virtual environment did not work. That is okay. Um, just skip that part of it for now, and we will we'll deal with it when we need to with deployment. Um, unfortunately, the M1 chip has some bugs with some people. Again, I spent like six hours trying to figure that out yesterday and couldn't, uh, even with the help of a bunch of people that are very familiar with Macs. So um, we're just going to have to kind of roll with it. So, um, cool, this is linked. So y'all will be able to pull my code as I go. Uh, so let's start the lesson. Okay, uh, this lesson is going to be learning about how to install and use a few of the many, many, many available Python libraries. Uh, we're going to be using pip to install our Python packages. Uh, you want to think of pip just like NPM for our node modules and our node packages. Um, there are so many different uh, things that we can use to install extra libraries that give us access to a bunch of different commands. Um, there's a ton of info on here. Um, realistically, if you just Google neat Python libraries, I'm sure that you can come up with a fun, a bunch of fun stuff to do. So let's see, how about interesting Python libraries. So let's take a look here. And would really recommend uh, TensorFlow. <laughs> Please don't touch TensorFlow. It's just, it's not, it's not gonna be fun for you at this point, it's machine learning. So um, number one on the list, look at that pillow. Um, it's Python image library. This is one of the first ones that we're gonna be using today. Um, we're gonna learn how to manipulate images by using the command line. We're gonna take some, uh, PNG files of little weather icons, and we're going to turn them into JPEGs uh, via the command line. We're also going to learn how to rotate the images via a Python program. So we're going to write a Python program that takes in images and processes all of the images in the directory and does something with them. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn uh, PNGs into JPEGs. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to rotate the images. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that. Um, matplotlib, I think David has some experience with this one. Um, you can use data to plot it on a graph. 
I, I have to played around. Graphic, make different kinds of graphs. You can play around with anything, any way of displaying anything. Cool. That sounds pretty cool. Um, might be something to screw around with. I, I think what y'all need to be doing over the next day and a half is when we get done with this lecture today, uh, you're going to be set loose and I'm going to give you a day and a half to play around with Python libraries. And at the end of the day tomorrow, we're going to have everybody share what they found. Just give like a little one to two minute spiel about what you found, share your screen, show us what you built. And if you build something where you just make an API call, whatever, doesn't matter, but I want y'all to actually dig in, read some docs and play around with this stuff. Um, NumPy, NumPy is a great one. Uh, it's a, um, another one I'm sure that David's played around with. Um, essentially, it's just, uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with data. Um, what else? Open, yeah, don't play with computer vision unless you're ready for that. Um, image processing is tough. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to do much with it in like a day. Uh, requests, we're going to be using that today too. This is how you make HTTP requests. We're going to be converting our data into JSON, which is kind of cool with another package. Uh, Keras, again, deep learning. Don't, don't play around with that. Don't play around with TensorFlow. Um, this is a horrible list. <laughs> These are all really, um, yeah, there's a lot of really powerful in here powerful ones in here but anyway there's some really cool stuff so you're gonna get to play around with these on your own and just find something fun to build over the next day and a half so if you want some kind of fun fun ones there's pi pi game that you can play with you can make games with pi game yeah well look at that python with the controller in its mouth so you can make games with Pi Game. That's a fun little one. My channel, that's just fun. Yeah. yeah, fun little one. Space Invaders. Oh, that's neat. Make a little menu. Cool. Okay, well, that's a good list. Um. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff um, out there that you're going to be able to use and play around with. Um, we're going to be using pip3 in Python to download and install the following libraries. Um, Arrow is going to be used just like we used moment.js in React for better date and time processing for Python. So we can, if we have a like a Unix timestamp, we can turn that into a readable date and time. We're going to use that to convert our sunset or sunrise time into something that's actually usable. Um, Pillow is an image processing library. Python.env, I'm gonna show you how to do environment variables today in Python, just like we used uh, environment variables in um, our Express server. Requests, simple yet elegant HTTP library. We're gonna be playing around with that to make API calls. Um, so let's take a look at what we're starting with because there's some starter code here. Uh, images is just a directory of these little images um, that are all set up to use our open weather map API later. Um, we're going to, did I already have you guys sign up for an open, open weather map key? I want to say I did. No. No. It takes like two seconds. It's really not yeah. that bad though. Okay. What API? Oh, I had you do the movie one. That's right. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're going to be signing up for an API key shortly. So um, images are all, the file names all match a subset of information in the Open Weather Map API. And I'm going to give you um, a preview of that once we see it here, once we make start making API calls. But um, the images are here so that we can convert and mess around with them when we eventually get to that part of the lecture, which is coming up next. Um, API call.py is where we are going to make an API call to a uh, JSON test page. It's that typico.u, whatever. We've played around with it before using test API calls. We're just going to get sample user data. We're going to learn how to turn that into JSON format so we can actually read it. 
then we're going to learn how to pull data from that JSON and put it into Python lists and Python dictionaries. Um, so that if for some odd reason you wanted to use an API in your project, you would have the ability to do so. Um, David's class did not learn how to do that. So you guys are getting an extra bonus today. Um, convert to jpeg.py is going to be a program that we write, we write using the pillow library that converts our PNG files into JPEGs. Um, the same thing with rotate.py, we're gonna convert a series of PNG icons uh, into JPEG and rotate them 90 degrees. So you're gonna learn a little bit more about how that library works. Um, utils.py, uh, this is gonna hold some reusable helper functions that are going to help minimize our code clutter and keep things dry. Um, so we're going to have a, a, a function essentially that converts a JSON response into, or converts an API response into a JSON object. And since we're going to be using that across multiple files, we're going to put it in a utility, utils file so that we can import it from that file in other files, just like we've done before. So this is that kind of similar to like services? Yeah, essentially. Um, it's... Yeah, I guess we did use some helper functions there, but it's just essentially showing you how to modularize your, your code so that you can put helper functions elsewhere and just keep things dry. Um, weather.py, we're going to make a call to the open weather map API and display weather data. Um, weather GUI, same thing as above, but we're going to use uh, TK enter to prompt the user for their location. This is what that looks like. Uh, Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I'm going to show you what, what, what we're hopefully going to build. Um, so most of you will be able to do it. This is actually really cool. Uh, let's here. Let me just clone this real quick so I can show you. This is really neat. Completed. Okay. That would explain it. All right. I need to put my API key in. Anyway, actually, you know what I can do? I'll show you on here. Does this work on here? This is what it's going to look like. So we are going to have a nice little weather pop-up window that we build. And when you enter your zip code, it gives you the weather info and pops it into this nice, neat little pop-up. Isn't that cool? All the trouble we're going to go through today is to build something silly and, and fun like this. So um, yeah, anyway, good times. So hopefully we all actually get to build that. Um, so let's talk about our library here with Pillow. So obviously that's not the Pillow we're talking about, right? That's Python Pillow. That's uh -huh, funny, right? Um, we are going to be using the image library or Python imaging library called Pillow. Uh, it's has a ton of methods to manipulate image files. Um, 
And to install or to access the methods, we have to install it using pip. I thought part of the lesson here was for y'all to play around with these. Where did that part of this lesson go? I think that's part of the second second lesson. Okay. So let's install Pillow so that we can use it. Okay. Well, that's weird. I thought I put that here. Okay, let me reclone that real quick. Y'all watched me copy and paste that code here, right? Yeah. Was it there or lectures? Okay. Try doing the tree well, command. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to re-download it. Uh, repose. Oh, it's in the lesson. So let's open up our uh, convert to jpeg.py. That's what we're going to be coding. And let's go talk about the pillow library. So overview, adds image processing capabilities to your Python interpreter. Okay, this library provides extensive file format support uh, and efficient internal representation and fairly powerful image processing capabilities. So when you're reading documentation for installing a package, there are a couple of big things you want to look for. Number one is installation. You need to figure out how to install it, right? So there's instructions here on how to install it. Um, there's also warnings. So make sure that you, you know, if you're familiar with this stuff, every time you come back here to look at the docs, make sure that things are the same as they were the last time you used it. Um, but basic installation right here is how we're going to be installing it. Um, it should be the same for all of our installations because we're using pip on everything. Um, so let's all do this. Let's go type Python 3 M. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this. This is running it using actual Python 3 command, but you, you all should have installed pip already. So you can install it using the command that they show you there, or, uh, you know what, well, you know, let's do as their suggestion. Let's say Python 3 dash M pip install upgrade pip. So this makes sure that we're using the most current version of pip. And then we are going to install the library. So uppercase P, pillow. Cool. So I actually upgraded mine because I went from 8.2 to 8.31. So click on the Python snake. Oh, there's a Python Easter. Oh, that's terrible. Click on the Python Easter when you installed Pillow. I 
ready to punch whoever came up with that emoji. If you're having problems installing it, let me know. But it should say successfully installed pillow 8.3.1. Um, ben, mm -hmm. uh, I got an error. Okay, let's see it. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think this is what I got. Okay, that's just a warning. Oh, wait, no, environment error. Hmm. Okay, go ahead and do just uh, tie, try typing which pip3. Okay, type pip3 install dash dash upgrade space, uh, no, oh. uh, space uppercase p and for pillow. There you go. Gotcha. That should work. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I think you have to upgrade uh, PIP first. Uh, we tried that. I mean, I got, the, I got the upgrade PIP error, but I still was able to download it and just told me, hey, you might want to consider this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Try that. Do pip3 install upgrade pip3. Uh, Python. <laughs> All right. Um, go try ahead and try the pip3 install upgrade pip is what it says we install dash dash upgrade pip3 we already did we just tried she that. just tried that oh oh she didn't do the install okay yeah uh try just pip install uh, dash dash upgrade pillow <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, oh, it should still work with 19.2.3. Can you scroll up for the error? And let's see what that big error is all about. <laughs> oh my God. All right, all right, all right. Go back down a little. All right, ha oh, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Back up to the top. All right. Oh man. All right. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and scroll back down all the way to the bottom. <sighs> Type which pip for me. You do brew install Python three. This is gonna take a second. Ah, you already have Python three. Everybody take this time uh, while Bo and I are debugging this to go and get your open weather map API key. That way we're not all just twiddling our thumbs while I'm trying to fix this. Um, so there's a link in the lesson to open weather map right up where the starter code is. So go do that, sign up for an API key while we try to do this. And I'm gonna pause the recorder here. All right, we're having fun, aren't we? On Python library day. I told you today was gonna be a fun one. Um, we all got pillow installed, right? Is there anybody that had issues getting pillow installed? Good. Okay, so let's let's keep moving on. Um, 
Oh, da, 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 da. may have install issues. We talked about that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to import the necessary methods that we need from this library into our Python file. So at the top of our convert to jpeg.py, we're going to type from PIL import image. And the reason that we know we need this is from the docs, because if we go to our handbook, if we want to do image processing here, well, let's look at, yeah, well, let's look at that. No, that's not what we want. Let's look at the tutorial here. How about reading and writing images? So, uh, we're going to be using the open function in the image module. That's what we're going to be using to process our images. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's going on in these lines, um, but we're going to end up unpacking a tuple, which is kind of cool, right? We learned about that the other day. And we're going to be using this OS and Sys module, which come, they come by default with Python, to access what we type in the command line. Um, we're going to use a combination of that and this image module to be able to manipulate. Uh, this is actually the exact code that we're going to be using um, to manipulate our images as they come in. So we're going to, I'll kind of talk a, lot, a little bit about exactly what's going on here uh, now, and then we'll all type it out as a group. Uh, another disclaimer I want to give you, and this is the only time I'm going to talk shit on Notion. Um, Sometimes when you copy and paste things from Notion, even though they are tabbed perfectly and set up perfectly, you will get tab indentation issues with Python. So sometimes you may need to type things if you see an error um, manually, which I know can suck because you can't just copy and paste things. But uh, I just want to give you that kind of disclaimer because if you copy and paste something and it doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean the code is bad. There's just weird formatting sometimes with Notion and Python. So again, just why Python is so much fun, right? So what's happening here is we're importing OS and Sys, which are modules that are available just generically in Python. We don't have to install them. Um, OS is going to give us the ability to use the path that we're currently in. Uh, the path that we enter down here it gives us access to the path we enter in our command line. Um, and then our sys is going to give us access to the arguments that we pass in to whatever command we're entering in the command line. And we're going to do some little demos here where you get to see how that works and what's coming in. And you'll notice here we're using the one colon. Who, uh, who remembers what this means? That one colon. Does it just mean everything after the first index? Well, technically the second index. It's a... Included, yeah. right range, self-including range. So uh, everything in the first index is included up all the way through everything because there's nothing closing at the end. Right. So we're going to have access to all the arguments we pass in on the command line. This is actually really, really neat. And we're going to play around with it so you can see what's happening here. So we're, call it, we're saying for in file in sysargv one colon. So essentially, we're going to type in the bottom of our terminal when we execute this code. Instead of just using this, the, the little play button, we're actually going to type out our command. We're going to execute it with Python 3. So we're going to say Python 3, convert to jpeg.py, and then we're going to give it some arguments. And those arguments are going to be the images that we want to convert. And those are what we're isolating here with this for info. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, this for in file is going to be accessing each of those arguments. And what we're doing is for each of those in files, we're going to split using the os.path, we're going to split the file and the extension. So if you look here, we've got 01d.png. So what this is doing is when these are passed in, if they're being passed in as tuples, essentially, and this is, un well, it's not technically a tuple, but this is unpacking those, uh, those file names so that we're storing the file name in one variable, f, and the extension, so .png, in another. 
So it essentially splits everything at the dot. Really neat feature, right? Because we're able to discern the name of the file and the extension of the file so that we can do different things with it. So we're using that to split the in file. We're gonna say, okay, the out file, what we wanna save it as is gonna be the file name, so 01D, and we're using string concatenation here to say plus.jpg. So this line right here is renaming or essentially establishing a variable that we're mm -hmm. going to use to save our image file. That's good. Okay. Then we're going to say if in file is not equal to out file. So if it'd be silly to make the same thing, right? We can't, we're not going to be able to overwrite a file. So this is making sure that the files that we have are actually not JPEG already. Then we're going to try with image.open as I am, I am dot save out file. So this is just going to convert our file to a JPEG extension. The library has all the commands built in to do this, except OS error. It, this is just error handling. So this is gonna handle an error. If there's an error, it's gonna say cannot convert file. And it'll, um, it'll tell us what the error is. So this is essentially how this is going to work. A second argument could be supplied to the save method, which explicitly specifies a file format. We're going to be doing that too, because we want to specify that we're using a JPEG format. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll see that here in just a second. So this is kind of the overall goal of what we're trying to accomplish with our code. So beneath our import of uh, PIL from image, we are going to, uh, or image from PIL, sorry, we're going to import OS and sys. And then what we're going to do, the OS module provides functions for interacting with the operating system, and the sys module provides functions and variables to manipulate different parts of the Python runtime environment. So let's use print to play around with this a little bit. Let's do print sys.argv index zero. So this is going to print the name of the script being executed. So if I go down here, I'm gonna clear my terminal and I type Python three, that's what I used to run a file, right? Remember how we use node to run node files? We're using Python to execute this file, Python three. So if I do Python three, convert to jpeg.py, that's the name of our file. And I pass it an argument like, banana.jpg. It's going to console log convert to jpeg.py because or it's going to print. It's not going to console log. Um, it's going to print that because we are printing the first thing passed to our uh, executable, right? We're, this is what that is. If we wanted to print the next thing in the list and run that same command, We've got banana.jpg. So this is giving us access to the names of not only what the file is called, the executable that we're running, but the file names that we pass. So if I were to make this a one colon, and I pass to this a bunch of different things like uh, test1.jpg, test2.jpg, test3.jpg. It's going to put all of those things into a list. That's what's happening here. We're printing all of the things after this. So everything from index one all the way to the end, and it's putting them into a list. That's neat. That is actually pretty cool. It's worth the, the headache we've endured for today, right? At least you learn one really cool thing about Python. So let's. Uh, yeah, we tested that out. Good names, fun stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to stub up some sort of functionality here. So we're going to say for file in in sysargv sys.argv one colon. And for each of those files, so for each of the things that we're passing in, we need to do a couple things. We need to split the file name and extension. We need to use the file name to create 
a file out. So that's going to be our new image. We need to use the PIL image module to convert the file in into file out and we'll handle errors. Okay. So as we saw in the documentation for the pillow library, the first thing that we need to do is split the file from the extension so that we have access to the file name. That way we can rename it. So let's down here, try that's let's say F comma E equals OS dot path dot split text file in. And for right now, let's just print file comma F print extension comma E. So this is essentially assigning each of those different files and extensions to variables for each one of these things. So for each file, we're gonna print the file next to some text, a string that says file, and the extension next to a string that says extension. So let's rerun that command. <clears throat> and you'll see the first one, file test one, extension.jpg. File test two, extension.jpg. Y'all see what's happening here? Yes, I have a lot of blank stares. Are we just overcoming the stress of Python for the morning or do we not know what's happening? Talk to me. I'm um, getting an error saying um, uh, PIL is not a module. Let's check your screen. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing. Can you <clears throat> do pip3 install dash dash upgrade pillow? Mm, no, go pip3 install. Dash dash upgrade space uppercase P pillow. Okay, now try running it. There you go. Betsy, you want to share yours? Yeah. You're muted. Don't worry, I wasn't saying anything important. Anyways, um, yeah, but I can I see your screen? I think I know what I'm missing. I think I'm fine. Okay, maybe maybe I'm not. Oh, I am. We're good. Okay. Your presentation was different than Katia's, right? Okay. That was in my mind. So you're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got a it's saying import PIF could not be resolved from source. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, and you did pip3 install dash dash up. All right. Go ahead and type it again. Let's check it out and see what happens. So pip3 install dash dash upgrade pillow. Okay, and then try to run it again. Or 
that's just fine. We're good. Cool. All right. Oh, we're all having such fun today, aren't we? So let's continue down. And we've separated the file from the extension, right? Let me uh, add commit push here. Uh, add file extension. Split. Okay. So if you need to pull, you can pull using those commands. Um, the Uh, we've got this set up so that we're able to split the extension. So the next thing we need to do is we need to use the file name that we've determined to create a file out. So that's what this line's going to do. We're just going to call it file out. We're going to say file out equals f, which is our file name, plus as a string dot jpg. So this is going to create a new file that we're using, and we're going to pass that new file into our image library as the thing that we want to save it as. So we go down here, and this is where we're going to say, if file in is not equal to file out, then we're going to try. Try except is just a, hey, try to do this, and if it doesn't work, do this. So we're going to do try with image.open file in as I am. That's just a little shortcut. We're going to call it I am just for shortcut purposes here. We're going to I am dot convert to RGB, which is going to end up being a JPEG. And we're going to save it as file out. All this is pulled from pillow documentation. So if this looks crazy, like you shouldn't need to know how to write this code. This is all from the docs. You just have to read the docs and get good at reading docs. Um, that's what using all of these libraries is going to be all about, is reading documentation and figuring out how this stuff works. So we're going to print f string successfully converted, and we'll use the name here, file in. And for a try, we have to have an accept OS error. So this is, if there's an error, we're going to say, okay, we'll pass it out as error, and then we'll print it. And then we'll also print, cannot convert file in. So what this is going to do is when we pass a series of images into it, for each of those images, that's what this is happening here. This is essentially a for each, right? Let's say, well, it's a for in. So for each of the images in the list of images that we pass in, we're going to split it. So we get the file name and the extension. We technically don't need this anymore. Um, we are going to rename or, or essentially give a name to the file out that we want to save it as. Check to make sure that the file in is not equal to the file out because we wouldn't want to convert a JPEG to a JPEG. That would be silly. And then we want to try the commands that we found in our docs. So this is what it says in the docs to convert an image into a JPEG. Then we handle the error. So what we can do is you'll notice right now, right? I have no nothing up my sleeves. We have all of these images. And if we pass those images to our uh, file uh, executable and say Python 3 uh, convert to JPEG, and we're going to go and just convert everything in the directory. 
So if we start typing images, we'll go into the images directory and we're going to do star, which is all dot PNG. So convert all of the PNG files. When we hit enter, you'll notice now that it's converted all of your PNGs to JPEGs. It also takes away their transparency, right? Unfortunately. You just wrote a script that converts images, right? Let me add commit and push. Uh, okay. The with keyword is used in working with unmanaged resources like file streams. Uh, it allows you to ensure a resource is cleaned up when that code uses finishes running, even if exceptions are thrown. You can read more about it here. That's just like a little added bonus. Um, so success, that worked, right? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to play around with rotation. So we can rotate our images by 90 degrees. So what we'll do is we're going to take the code from our so if, I, if I didn't if I didn't get there, do you just want me to pull your code? No, let's I, check it out. Let's see what I you got. I ran it and it converted one. Let's check out your. Uh, Maybe I ran the wrong thing. Who knows? So I copy and pasted this, and then that is the only change. Indentation. Where? You're running a for loop, right? Your lines nine through seventeen need to be indented one more. Okay. Well, delete that JPEG before you rerun that command, or it'll throw an error. It wouldn't throw an error, would it? Um, I guess it would just not run. No, I think it would just not run that. Yeah, piece, that's what that I meant, chipping. not run for that file. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anybody else with any errors or bugs? Okay. Uh, yeah, mine. Okay. Let's check it out. We'll All right. Okay. Uh, I am dot convert. You're missing a T on convert on line 12. Line 12. Yay. So the nice thing is we already have code that can convert an image to a JPEG. So if we want, we can just throw a little extra bit of code in there, just one little line, not even a line, just a little bit. And we can chain this rotate 90 in there to rotate the image by 90 degrees. The other thing that we're going to change is this rotated. So we're going to add another file extension um, or we're going to add to the file name a little bit. So it'll, it'll say rotated.jpg. So what we can do is if we copy this code all here that we've already written and go into rotate.py and paste it, we'll just make a couple little changes. We'll update the file name to underscore rotated. And right here, after we convert it to RGB, we're going to rotate 90 degrees. And now we can run literally that same command, except instead of convert to JPEG, we're going to change it to rotate. It 
converts all of our images. And you'll notice that we now have, there's our moon, there's our moon rotated 90 degrees. With just a couple small changes. What is one useful situation where you might use something like this? I mean, there's websites dedicated to converting file extensions, so. Yeah. Say you took a whole bunch of super high res images on your fancy schmancy digital camera, but you want to store them not necessarily as full size images because, you know, storage space is money, right? If you don't want to save the full high res images, then you can use something like this to go through all of the images in the directory and convert everything for you. Right. This is an interesting, fun way to write something useful in Python. One of the things that you hear in Python a lot is automate the boring stuff. And that's what we've done here. We've done that. Instead of having to go and one by one convert a file to a JPEG format using some rando website, we just wrote a script that'll take care of doing that for us. Yeah, the rotation thing is silly, but it's, it's fun. It's neat. It's actually useful, right? You can do a lot of really cool stuff with Python libraries. Can I tell a story about that? Just a quick one, please. Yes. Um, automate the boring stuff. So I had a job, like a little gig, where I had to find all the images in a, like, a, like, a, like a large file of PDFs. So I had to go through like very large, like 500 page PDFs. And like they were like, like about a 20 or so files of PDFs and I had to go through each of the PDFs and find all the images. And I had to do it manually because they didn't expect me to, to do anything with programming. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So I created a, like a little script that would go through each of the PDFs and find every single page that there's a image and pull also the, um, the little like caption from the image. So I didn't have to go through each and every PDF and scroll through, all, um, you know, Adobe Reader or whatever. Yep. Web scrapers. Who knows what a web scraper is? Corey, you want to tell us about web scraping? Uh, essentially, they're just scripts that kind of scour the internet, like if I uh, use a lot of times for like finding free movies or something it can scour every site along to find sources for that and then deliver you the list of it. Right. You can specify a list of domains or places to go on the internet and have a script run and pull all relevant information from that using a web scraper. So if you want to get all of the images for a certain or all of the H1 tags for the deal with a certain topic or something like that. You can use a web scraper to pull all relevant information and return it to you via a script so you don't have to go and, and manually do that. Um, we don't have a ton of time to do that as a lesson, but that's one of the things you might consider doing for your, um, your little Python library experiment that we're gonna be playing around with over the next day and a half is just do a tutorial and build a Python web scraper. Um, a lot of interview questions, especially if you're working for a company that deals with any sort of data, um, may ask you to build a web scraper for your uh, technical interview question. Uh, they'll give you like, you know, 24 or 48 hours to build a web scraper. So that might be something worthwhile to check out. Um, there's a lot more you can do here with document or with image files. You can check out the documentation. There's all sorts of fun stuff you can do. You can uh, reshape images. You can squish stuff. You can compress stuff. You can expand stuff. Uh, you can adjust the colors on things. There's a, you, a really a lot of fun stuff that you can do using this library. So if you found that interesting, have fun with it. Um, let me take a look at the next lesson here, part two. I was planning on doing this after lunch, but if we have time, we might be able to at least get started on it. Um,
yeah, I don't want to start this. We've got only 20 minutes because it starts out with a 15 minute exercise. So um, y'all can take a break. I know this morning wasn't exceptionally productive, but y'all take a break, go to your outcomes event at 11. Afterwards, take lunch and I will see you guys back here at 1 p.m. Central. All right. That work? Um, ben, for some reason, am I the only one having trouble pulling his code? I just wanted uh, to pull it because you have comments in there. And yeah, share your screen. I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Yeah, I had to use origin main instead. Of yeah, origin. it's going to be origin instead, of, instead of upstream. upstream. Yeah, I said uh, upstream. Well, that, uh, yeah. that is the problem then. Well, that's so, because right. you didn't fork the repo, so you don't have an upstream. You only have an origin. Yeah, I changed it to clone instead of fork. So. He, yeah. It's almost like that GitHub workflow is, is important. No, you kidding. change it to upstream when you want to like. I'm just oh. fucking with you. Do, 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 do.